Hi, I'm Tyler Compton, and you're watching the sixth episode of Gaming and Go. So originally this episode was going to be about something completely different, but in between episodes 5 and 6, I changed computers, and I noticed that on this machine, if we build our game here, we can see that it runs very differently here than it did on my old machine. As you can see, the player is moving really slowly, and so are the bullets. It's as if the game is lagging, but this computer should be at least as capable of running this simple game as my old computer was. So what's going on here? Well, let's take a look at the code in charge of moving the player and see if we can get an idea of what might be happening. So if you recall, the player has a keyboard mover component that it attaches to itself, and this keyboard mover is in charge of moving the player around depending on the state of the keyboard. So when I press left, it moves left and so on. So if we go to that code, we can see that when a keyboard mover is created, it takes a speed argument. And this speed argument is used to control by how much the player moves left or right, depending on the keyboard state. So the obvious solution here, at first at least, is to change this speed value to something higher so that the player moves more quickly. And we can do that. We can change this by a factor of 10, so 0 0.05 to 0 0.5. And we will see, if we build it, that yes, the player moves much more quickly. But we've caused a new problem for ourselves, because if we take this same build to my old computer and run it, the player is going to be moving way quicker than they should. Because it seems like the player's movement and the bullet's movement is dependent on how quickly the game is being run on the computer. So we're not able right now to create a consistent experience between various machines with various CPUs and other hardware. So what can we do to get around this? Well. Let's first take a look at what this value means as it is right now. So this is saying the player will be moved a distance of 0 0.05 pixels when. Well, right now it's every frame. And the way that our code is written right now, frames happen as quickly as they possibly can. Our game will run at the highest possible speed that the hardware will allow. And this is mostly a good thing because it means that the game will run as smoothly as it possibly can on a variety of machines, but it does seem to cause this problem for us. So what if we were able to adjust how quickly the player moves around by how quickly the game is running? Like, what if we had some kind of value that would increase when the game was running slowly and decrease when the game is running quickly and apply that to our speed dynamically to make it so that the player appears to always move at the same rate regardless of the hardware? Well, this is actually a fairly well-explored concept in games because, as you might imagine, this is an issue in every game ever made, potentially. And that value is often referred to as a delta. Now, a delta is not a particularly descriptive name, but it basically just means a value that changes, right? And in this case, it increases when the game runs slowly to compensate and move the player or whatever physics operation you're doing more quickly, and decreases to compensate for the game running faster than expected. So let's take a look at how we might come to this delta value. And so I'm going to be making this delta value av available as a global variable. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it's going to be used all over the place in the code. And like I mentioned before, this code is not threaded and the delta value is never going to be updated in multiple places at the same time. So this shouldn't cause any problems. So now how do we calculate this delta? Well, we're going to be doing this by timing how long it takes for a frame to be processed and adjusting the delta based on if the frame happened more quickly or more slowly than expected. So we're going to do this in a fairly simple way. At the beginning of our main loop here where all processing happens, we're going to be capturing a time value and we're going to call this frame start time. So now we've recorded when the frame starts, so it's fairly straightforward at the end of the frame to calculate how long it took for the frame to process. So just for fun, let's take a look at how long that takes. So we can just go ahead and print the time.sense, the frame start time, and let's build our program and see how long it generally takes to create frames. Okay, let's see what we got. So it looks like it's usually in the realm of 1 to 4 milliseconds, which is pretty quick. So we know that the game is running well, it's just that our speed values are not being adjusted dynamically yet, but that's exactly what we're going to work on. So okay, now we know how long it takes for a frame to be processed, but how are we going to calculate the delta from here? 
Well, in order to do this, we're going to have to decide some kind of value, a sort of expected amount of physics operations or amount of frames that we see per second. And when I say expected, I just mean what's the frames per second that will result in the delta being equal to one? Well, for the purposes of this, I think that it's fitting to have it be 60 because, you know, that's kind of the de facto standard for game running speeds, at least on consoles, is 60. So we're going to have this value be called target ticks per second. And I'm using this ticks name here to refer to, you know, you could imagine CPU ticks, but it mostly means like physics engine ticks. And in our case, the physics engine is just moving the player or the bullets around. So we can use this value here to calculate the delta by saying delta equals time dot since the frame start time in seconds times the target ticks per second. So why does this make sense? Well, you could imagine a situation where the frames really are being created at our target 60 frames per second value. And that would mean that the time since frame start and frame end would be 1 60th of a second, right? That's the situation in which there'd be enough time in a second to process 60 frames. And so 1 60th times 60 is going to be equal to 1. So the delta value in this case will be 1. But in a situation where it's running, say, at 30 frames per second, this sense value will be 1 over 30 seconds. And 1 over 30 times 60 is equal to 2. And conversely, if the game is running twice as quickly as we expect, this value will be 1 over 120, meaning we're getting 120 frames per second. And 1 over 120 times 60 is equal to 0 0.5. So we can see that this delta value naturally decreases and increases based on a factor of how much faster the game is running or slower the game is running than we expect. OK, so now that we have our delta value calculated, let's take a look at how we're going to use it. It's actually very simple. Let's go to our keyboard mover script here again. And so right now we're moving at a constant speed that doesn't change depending on frame rate. Let's go ahead and make the speed value relative to how quickly the game is running by multiplying it by the delta. And multiplying it makes sense because the delta, remember, decreases as the game moves more quickly, or I should say runs more quickly, and increases as it runs more slowly. So this is actually all we have to do. And so we can go ahead and rebuild our project here. And we'll actually see that it looks like we made the problem worse. The player is actually quite a bit slower than they used to be. And, but the reason for that is pretty simple. If we look at the player script here where we configure the player's speed, it's 0.05. And this was fine on my old machine and a little slow on my current machine, but it appears to be a complete crawl now that we've applied the delta. And the reason for that is because the meaning of this value changed. It used to be how much the player moves when a key is pressed every frame. But now it means how much the player moves when the key is pressed every 60th of a second. And on most machines for a simple game like this, we're going to be running at a frame rate quite a bit quicker than 60 frames per second, so we're seeing this be just simply not adequate. It's way too slow. So let's go ahead and adjust that. Let's say instead of 0.05, let's move it all the way up to 5. So this means every 60th of a second, the player will be moving 5 pixels. So, okay, that's quite a bit better. I like that a lot. And what's nice is that now this movement will remain consistent, regardless of which computer you run this on. If you go ahead and run this on a Raspberry Pi, the player's movement may seem a bit choppier, but the rate at which they're moving from the left to the right of the screen, or vice versa, is going to remain very close to the same. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply that to the bullet. So like how the player has a keyboard mover, the bullet has a bullet mover. And we can see here that we move the bullet's position every update by its speed times cosine and sine. And if you recall, that was to allow the bullet to move at a consistent speed regardless of which way it's facing. But it doesn't really matter. For the purposes of what we're doing right now, we can just multiply it by the delta, just as we did the player. Okay, perfect. And you might already guess what's going to happen here, but let's go ahead and rebuild the project and see that, once again, now the bullets are moving very slowly, just like the player used to, because our speed value is so small. So let's go ahead and adjust that. So the bullet speed here 
is just a constant that right now is 0.15, which again says right now that the bullet will move at 0.15 every 60th of a second, which is just way too slow. So right now the player is moving at 5. Let's say that the bullet should move twice as fast, and let's make the bullet move or have a speed of 10. Okay, that looks quite a bit better. I'm not sure if that's exactly how it used to run on my old machine, but it feels pretty good. It's definitely not too slow. So now we can see that we've adjusted everything such that it runs on my computer. And while I don't have my old computer anymore to test it, we would see that if we ran it on that machine, it would run very similarly to how it does on this machine. In fact, it might be indistinguishable. So that's it. That's how you make your game's physics independent of how quickly the game is actually running. This way we get the game to move as smoothly as it possibly can while still providing a consistent gameplay experience. So let's actually have a little bit of fun here and demonstrate what we did. So let's say in this main loop here we add an artificial weight. Let's say that, you know, this is, this is simulating what it might feel like to run this game on a very slow computer, or at least a slightly slow computer. So let's start by just making a 10 millisecond latency. You know, pretty slow, but not crazy slow, right? Not entirely out of the realm of possibility. We can see that while it is a bit jumpier, I'm not sure if that's coming off on camera or not, but it's definitely jumpier than before. It feels the same, more or less. The player is still moving at the same speed and so are the bullets. And now we can get, just go ahead and go crazy and increase this to 50 milliseconds, you know, a very slow computer. And we'll see that the player moves very choppily. It doesn't really look that good, but the gameplay experience is fairly similar and the player is not moving too slowly or slower than before. This delta value is a fairly simple way to solve this problem. It's not the only way to solve the problem. We could have imagined a situation where we artificially limited the FPS to some value, or if we had some kind of separate physics calculation that was independent of the graphics calculation that ran at a consistent rate. But this is a good way to do it, and one that you'll see in Unity as well. Unity refers to this delta value as time.delta time. And as far as I'm aware, it, it's basically the same thing as our delta. And you'll see people using it in the same way that we use this delta value. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.